joining us uh, at this debate uh, hosted by uh, Central European Policy Center and transit organizers together. We are honored that so many of you showed up. Uh, and I'd like to begin by introducing um, our distinguished guests to you. We are honored to welcome Professor George Schoeflin, member of the European Parliament. He is a professor, a good friend of, of Central Europe, and also someone who is best placed to talk uh, about Central Europe to you, and European integration as well, combining both practice and theoretical knowledge. His partner for today's debate is Tomasz Foti. Currently a freelance journalist. Uh, prior to that, uh, he has worked for Hungarian MTE, and before that, he has spent, uh, if I'm not mistaken, over 15 years in in Brussels, uh, working as a correspondent uh, to BBC, among other uh, major media outlets. The my name is Mark Sabo. I work for SEPS, and today's discussion will be about. Uh, Europe, European integration, and Hungary. And the way the debate will go is that I will uh, give the floor to our distinguished speakers who will introduce their thoughts and their ideas to you. Uh, both of them, they will have then an allotted time to re reflect on uh, what has been said. And then we will open the discussion to you and we would be very happy to take your questions. Uh, both of our guests are happy to answer as many questions as you may have, so please uh, do not restrain yourself, ask us, ask whatever uh, is in your mind. But before I begin, if our two distinguished guests would allow me, by a show of hands, just to see uh, the climate here, how many of you would vote if a referendum on your country's European Union membership were held this Sunday, so tomorrow, how many of you would vote for a yes, by a show of hands, how many of you would vote for a yes for EU membership if a referendum were held tomorrow? Okay. Terrific. Uh, thank you very much for that. We'll most likely repeat the question at the end of the debate. Uh, <laughs> and now uh, I would like to give the floor uh, to uh, Tomasz Foti and then to Professor Schoeplin if that order arrangement is acceptable to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. That was actually the first debate between us uh, who would start. Um, the, the alphabetical order was. Um, <clears throat> it was very interesting this introducing uh, this question because uh, I wanted to ask you. So I'm happy that uh, half it's uh, already did. Um, the second question would be if you have to vote tomorrow for the membership <coughs> of EMU introducing Euro, what would be the outcome? So please, again, raise your, or let your hand down. So, four. 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 Joining the Euro, yes. That's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> let me tell you that uh, during these 15 years I've been in, in Brussels as a correspondent. Actually, I worked for the BBC World Service, Hungarian uh, service. Um, after the 15 years, when I returned to Hungary in um, 2009, I had to realize that um, um, my perception of of, of the European Union is quite different than, um, than those of uh, the Hungarians. Uh, um, I felt too that, that uh, maybe, and, and, and I had a bad conscience about it, that I was maybe brainwashed by the European Commission, <coughs> just sitting every day at the, the midday briefing, the, the press conference of the, the Commission and uh, identifying myself with uh, um, many times, or most of the times, with the position of the Commission. Um, I've been uh, 
witnessing the process of uh, the enlargement. Um, I've been in, 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 in I, I moved to Brussels in '95, so it was just the beginning of this this whole process, and uh, I had to see that that uh, um, until recently, and I'm speaking now just about the Hungarian politics. Um, <coughs> All the, the political elite agreed there was no major discussion about the, the process of the, the accession. And uh, um, recently, and I think that it goes parallel with the, the economic financial crisis, so it started in 2008, more and more question mark uh, uh, appeared. And, uh, when I moved to Hungary, I had to face myself cliches like, uh, well, um, those who, who blame the European Union for all the problems in Hungary, doesn't matter it's financial or, or, or any other kind, mostly, of course, financial. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, um, I remember someone was complaining that, oh, um, this, the, the sugar is not so sweet as used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the perception of, of, of normal the people who, well, we can, uh, we can say that they, they, uh, they were never brainwashed by the commission. They, they, they simply um, benefited from the membership until there was no problem. And uh, when the problems um, gathered also in, in, in Hungary, then, on the first place, had to find um, um, a reason to blame, and that was the European Union. And it's still today, uh, more and more, and uh, unfortunately, not only on the extreme right. And uh, I try also to play this this blaming game because I think that the elite, the political elite, and especially today. Uh, those who are in power in the government <coughs> has a certain responsibility. Uh, first of all, not discussing uh, 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 the negative uh, um, um, attitude. And uh, so I feel that I am in a continual defending uh, role, <coughs> defending the European Union, defending the, 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 the Commission's position. And uh, um, when I'm speaking about the, the problem of the perception, then I think mostly about um, how we can distinct the, uh, the, the, the problems with the EU, with blaming blame, with the new uh, member states and the uh, old member states. And I think that, that this is one of the keys of the problem that uh, there is a huge difference. There is so many dividing points. First of all, new members, old members. Secondly, uh, the old members, when did they join the, the European Union? Um, why did they, they join? Economic uh, reasons, political reasons, or both? Um, we can speak about the the, the Portuguese and the, the Spanish uh, accession, which was different. We can speak about uh, uh, how when, when, when uh, uh, Greece joined the EU, so different positions, or 95 um, um, with Austria, uh, Sweden, and, and Finland. Again, a little bit uh, different position than also the founding countries, the six countries. So, Another dividing point is the, uh, the con con uh, are the uh, uh, contributors to the, to the budget of the EU, net contributors, or benefits countries, beneficiary countries. So, so many problems, uh, so many point of view, but different than from the new countries. Uh, the new countries, Especially, I think that, that the, the younger generation, um, 
they see more, of course, the benefits of the European Union. And then what, this is something what we should really keep and, and, and try to, to preserve. Um, I think that I'm going now to, to stop here, and I think that I will have um, time enough, uh, occasion enough to defend 